This next unit is going to talk about linear equations. We will spend quite some time dealing with linear equations till the end. Linear equations will always make a very similar picture every single time. So similar that it will be the same picture. If you look in the word linear, the root word is line. Now there's a lot of applications with this, but we're going to work on just the definitions, the basics. So what we're going to do is make a line every single time. The general form of linear equation is the same. Y equals a number times X plus a number. Now, the reason this is an M and a B, there are reasons. I forget what they are. They're not important as it is understanding what they are called and what they do. But the picture must always be this. Y equals a number times X plus B. The X and the Y, you remember, match up with a coordinate plane or a graph. This is my x-axis or x-direction is sideways, and this is my y-axis. My y-axis is up and down. So what I want to be able to do is take a look at what do these two things mean. So let's take a look at the b first, the added number. This is called the y-intercept. Now notice it's not y intersect, but it might as well be called intersect because this number tells me where my line crosses the y-axis. In other words, it is the height of the line. So what does that mean? If I take a look at my graph, and this is my line, this added number tells me how far up and down my line should be, whether it's way down here or somewhere in the middle or actually at zero, zero, or up here. My line can move up and down based on the added number. That is the added number. It's called the y-intercept. The multiplied number is a little more complicated. What this does is it's called the slope. What it does is it actually tilts the line. It either tilts it down or it tilts it up. So it is the tilt of the line. Now the slope is very important because most times it needs to be written as a fraction. Top number, bottom number. The top number is known as the rise. When you rise out of bed, you stand up. Rise deals with the up and down direction. The bottom number is known as the run. Hopefully when you run, you run forwards and backwards. So the run is my sideways direction. I'll show you more examples of this, how this works. But for now, make sure that you have written down that the slope is the tilt of the line, whether it tilts up or tilts down. It is written as a fraction. If it's not, we need to change it to a fraction. The top number is the rise number. The bottom number is the run number. So what this equation does is the first number tells me how much is it tilted. Is it tilted a lot? Is it tilted a little bit? Is it tilted up? Is it tilted down? So we'll look at those in a second. It's the tilt. The second number, my added number, tells me how far up and down it should start. So let's say it's here and tilted up. That's fine. It could be here and tilted down. It could be here and tilted zero or straight across. But that's what these two numbers do specifically. We're going to take a look at a few different examples using the actual numbers for slope and intercept. This equation says y equals 3 over 4, 3 fourths times x plus 6. What we're going to do is always start with the height or the y-intercept. If I look, this is a positive 6. Remember, it's where on the y-axis does this line cross. It crosses at positive 6. 
So take my pencil, start at zero, move up six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Put a point. This is where my line crosses. Now, I don't know if it's going to tilt up. I don't know if it's going to be level, or I don't know if it's going to tilt down. But I do know it crosses at six. That's all that point does. He is done. Now what the slope does is it helps determine which way my tilt is. Is it tilted up? Is it tilted even? Is it tilted down? Well, first off, it's a positive number. Which way do you think a positive slope will go? Off to the side, we can make a little chart. Positive slope will be increasing. So let's take a look at how slope works. I always have to start with the top number. Remember, it's rise over run. Rise first and run. Think about this when you wake up in the morning. Which can you do first? Hopefully you don't lay in bed and try to run. You must rise out of bed first, then run. So I'm going to start at my beginning point. This says rise three, run four. Now they're both positive. So if I start here and rise three, Positive 3 is up. 1, 2, 3, rise 3. From there, I must run 4. It's a positive 4, so I go to the right. Run 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Up 3, 1, 2, 3, over 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Put a point. Now my tilt is getting framed out. From that point, I can go again, up three, one, two, three, over four, one, two, three, four, put another point. And what I'm going to start doing is making a straight line. Uh-oh, I'm out of room. I don't have any more room to go up three, over four, up three, over four, up three, over four. What is the reverse of up three, over four? The absolute reverse. Down three, left four. So I can go back to my original point and go down three, left four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, down three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. And what will happen is I will make a straight line. And you would take your pencil and connect. Lines go on forever, so you would put arrows at the end. This is the line, all of the answers that make this equation true. Three-fourths is my tilt. Six is my start. Put a dot at six. From there, go up three right four, up three, right four, up three, right four. If I run out of room, reverse it. Down three, left four, down three, left four, down three, left four. Now let's take a look at a second equation. Similar idea, y equals a number times x plus another number. My multiplied number is always the slope. It's the tilt of the line. Does it tilt up? Does it tilt down? Is it increasing or decreasing? The y-intercept is always my added number. Remember, I want to start with the y-intercept first. It is negative 2, so find my y-axis, go to where negative 2 is. Ah, 2 down. 1, 2. Put a starting point. That's all this does. He's done. Next up, I'm ready to do my slope. Remember, slope always needs to be a fraction. So if it's not a fraction, you have to make it a fraction. This is the number negative 3. Luckily, we know how to make any number into a fraction. So this is negative 3 over 1. Start at your first point that you made, which is the y-intercept. I must rise negative 3. How do I rise a negative? Well, rising would be this way, but that's only if it's positive. Rising a negative would be down. So I must go down 3. 1, 2, 3. Now remember, the 1 is technically positive. Only the 3 was negative. So go down 3, rise negative 3, and run 1. Down 3 over 1. There's my point. From that point, down 3. 1, 2, 3 over 1. From that point, down 3. 1, 2, 3 over 1. I'm running out of room. How can I reverse down 3, right 1? Down 3, right 1. Down 3, right 1. The reverse is up 3, left 1. 1, 2, 3. One. One, two, three, one. And what I'll end up with is a straight line.
If your dots do not make a straight line, something went horribly wrong. Now you'll be using graph paper, so you'll be able to see them line up. I want to take a look at two special cases. Well, again, we're graphing linear equations. This equation simply says y equals 3. People look at this and say, wait a minute, this doesn't look like what it's supposed to. Every line is supposed to look like this. y equals something times x plus something. And I say, you're right. This always is my slope. This always is my y-intercept. So yes, every equation should look like this. The problem is some only look like this. Okay, so I have one number. I have to decide where does it belong. This is not as bad as it looks. Is this the slope or is this the y-intercept? That's what you have to ask. And here's what it is. This is the y-intercept. How come? What does the slope have to have attached to it? It has to have an x attached to it. Does this have an x? No. So this cannot be the slope. So it has to go here. OK, well then what goes here? A lot of kids will say, ah, oh, it's probably a 1. Yeah, but it can't be a 1. If I times a 1 here, then I would have a 1x up here, but I don't. What's the only number that can go here to not have it show up ever again? What number times x makes it completely go away? It has to be a 0. So what you'll have to do is take a short equation and fill in what it should be. OK, let's graph. y-intercept, that's where I start on the y-axis, up 3, because it's a positive 3. 1, 2, 3, put a point. Slope must be written as a fraction. My number is 0. 0 as a fraction is 0 over 1. Watch how this works. From your starting point, go 0 up. Watch. There, I just went 0 up. 1 right. 0 up, 1 right. 0 up, 1 right. What's the reverse of 0 up, 1 right? It's 0 down, 1 left. Watch, go 0 down. Nice job. 0 down, 1 left. 0 down, 1 left. 0 down, 1 left. By the way, what do we know about a 0 slope line? It's even. It's horizontal. There is no tilt to it. And that should make sense. There's 0 tilt. y equals negative 1 half x. I'm missing something. My normal equation should be y equals something times x plus something. OK, is this the slope or is this the intercept? It has an x with it that automatically makes it the slope. Negative 1 half. There is no added number. So what's the only number I can put here to show that there was no added number? What's the only number that doesn't change value is 0. So now I'm ready to graph this equation. OK, intercept is first. I go to 0, put a dot. Now some kids get tricked here. This is negative 1 half. OK, rise over run. Do I go up 1 or down 1? Is it negative or positive? Here's the deal with the negative fraction. It doesn't matter where the negative sign goes. You must pick 1 for it to go with. Would you rather have the negative with the top number or the bottom number? I don't care, but you must pick one. It can't go to both. You cannot have negative one over negative two because negative one over negative two is positive one half. And I don't want it positive, I want it negative. So let's do it with the top. Typically that's easiest. From the intercept, down one because it's a negative one, right two, one, two. Why is it right? Because this is a positive 2. Down 1, right 2. Down 1, right 2. What's the reverse of down 1, right 2? Up 1, left 2. Up 1, left 2. Up 1, left 2. And you'll make a straight line. This is graphing linear equations using the slope and the intercept. 